Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Cole Wolfron. This is our Rook Wolfron Thorn as Harding and Nev. And we are gonna go chit chat with Morrigan. This Do Templars be really not have authority over mages in Tevinter? What happens if there's blood magic? What do they do? Depends on the Templar. Depends on who's bought their loyalty. What do you do when the authorities can't be trusted to do the right thing? That's how I keep busy. Yeah, never is. God, that new axe looks so cool. Please. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. Let's go talk to Morrigan. Wherever she might be. The Archon doesn't care. That is a statement that applies to like pretty much all of Tevinter. The Archon doesn't care. Okay, back at the same bar where the first warden was a I'm dick. A Let's see what happens. Wait, Shades of the Blight. Meet Morgan. Let's call the spawn. Start conversation. Oh, is it just going to be Harding with a... Why did Morgan want to meet in Minrathis? Isn't she helping the field jumpers in Arlathan? Indeed. That's music from Inquisition. But today we have a guest, oh. and he needed the anonymity that only a city provides. Is it my guy? Well, look who it it's is. It's my boy. Good to see you, Lace. Rook, you remember how Varric and I served the Inquisition? He's the Inquisitor. Well, this is Inquisitor Adar. Does it look perfect? The man who led us all. <laughs> It's, it's the, uh, it's not how he looks like in the first game, but it's as close as I could get it. How many famous people do you know, Harding? Should I expect the, uh, Divine to show up? She also served in the Inquisition, but we didn't talk much. <laughs> Morrigan and Harding have told me about what you've accomplished since taking over for Varric. You've put together an impressive team, and you've got the best chance... Maybe the only chance to stop Elgernon and Gillenane. This is on you? No. I don't think it's on the Inquisitor. I don't think Rook thinks it's on the Inquisitor because, like, the Inquisitor did fucking enough. Did more than enough. I won't let you down. Don't worry about me. The Inquisitor did far the more than he needed to do. About the people depending on you. I only sealed the breach because I had people like Cassandra, Liliana, and Cullen with me from the start. Without Dorian's magic and Josephine's diplomacy, we never would have come together to stop Corypheus. Years later, I had to turn the Inquisition over to Chantry control. True. But I never lost the friends who had gotten me through it all. I don't think he looks... Ultimately, he looks a lot like himself, but not on. perfectly. Do right by them, and you'll find your way. We've got the makings of a good team, I think. We'll do our best. And while you do so, Rook, the Inquisitor will do his best to ensure that the rest of the world remains intact. That's his job. A daunting prospect. The Inquisitor's job is the, the south. south. Is under siege by Darkspawn. It is? It's that bad? Wait, what? If not for the Inquisitor, the South would have collapsed completely. He That's has not why. Been idle while you assembled your team. That's how they're going to keep the Inquisitor out of it. The Inquisition is busy fighting off a fucking army of Darkspawn. Tell me more about the South, yeah. I thought the gods were mostly active up here. It's really that bad in the south. Elganon and Gilanane have indeed restricted their activities to the north. Which is but the good. forces they deployed to the south, the strange new darkspawn, have spread fear and corruption. Good thing the king of Ferelden is a great warden. In history. 
Darkspawn have cut through the center of Orlais. Valreo and Halam Sheral are barely holding out. Fuck! Ferelden would have fallen already if not for help from Orzammar. With Denerim lost. Denerim lost? The Ferelden's are holding the line at Redcliffe. What? The free marches have the worst of it. Acting Viscount Aveline Val. Aveline's the Viscount? She's taking her people and what's left of her army to help Prince Vale keep Starkhaven. What? Maker, we didn't know. My ma. Don't worry. I talked to the Divine, and your mother's safe with the Inquisition. Okay, good. Thank you. The Inquisition might just be an arm of the Chantry now, but we've still done our part to get people to fight this threat together. Holy fuck! Again, the South is my problem, not yours, Rook. You need to do better, dude. You stop the gods, and I'll make sure the rest of Thetis doesn't fall to the Blight. That was a lot of info to drop! So, when Varric left... Kirkwall, Aveline's the active Viscount. She's going to Sebastian for help? Didn't see that coming. Denerim's fallen? And the Ferelden army is holding at Redcliffe? Val, Val Royo and Halam Shr So King Gaspar or Emperor Gaspard is holding Val Royo and Halam Shral. Alistair is having to hold the line in Redcliffe, not Denerim? Probably with Arl Tegan's help. And probably Eamon too, if he's still alive. It's been a while. Maybe the Earl Ferelden will come back just to help that. Because they need help. Shit. If the South is in such turmoil, why come up here just to talk? And how did you get here so fast? Did you think you were the only one to unlock the secrets of the Illuvians? Ah, uh, yeah, Morgan. That makes sense. Morgan helped the Inquisition use the Illuvians to travel. While I lack the Dreadwolf's Vir of us, I may still scurry between the walls of this world to be where I might do the most good. The Inquisitor asked to meet you, and I thought it might help you to meet him. I need your arc and your commit. Hmm. Honestly, I think we need an army, man. I have a team, but not much in the way of forces. If there's any military support you can spare, I'm sorry. Our forces in the south are stretched thin already. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm afraid the Grey Warden leadership doesn't think much more highly of me than they do of you. The Inquisitor mm. did not come That's all this true. way to leave you with empty words, however. He brought something no one else could. A wolf statuette? We've found others like it in the crossroads. Where'd you find yours? I found it right around the time Solus's ritual failed, when he was pulled into the Fade. We've examined the magic, and it's tied to the veil. To him. I think so, our boy Valdros looks so good. is ancient, and his magic is part of him in a way far beyond that of mortals. I suggest you take it to the crossroads and see if something in the lighthouse calls to it. Perhaps it will yield some insight into your new ally. I don't know if Rook will tell Adar that he doesn't trust him. He doesn't trust Solus. Solus, Solus is helping. I think Adar would believe any of these, but you know what? We're gonna do it. I think I think Rook doesn't trust Solus still because of the way Solus talks about him. He talks. He still talks like he's a god looking down on everybody. So I think right now, and maybe this will help him start to trust. So let's maybe Adar will say something. All right, Rook. I appreciate it. Solus has been helpful while he's trapped in the Fade, but anything that can help me get inside his head will help counter him getting inside mine. Wisely spoken. Solus rarely lies directly. True. But he finds ways to weave the truth into a noose you find he yourself sure wearing. He sure fucking does. Morrigan is right. Solus is dangerous. Anything that gives us some insight into his plans. He fooled us all. I think the Inquisitor before. looks fine. And the whole world very nearly paid the price for it. We should go, Inquisitor. The armies in the south need you. Right. Harding, stay sharp. You're my eyes in the north. Always, Inquisitor. Rook, good luck. If I come across anything else that can help you, you'll be the first to know. Okay. Thank you. Rook's definitely better looking than the Inquisitor, but... That was really cool! I liked that! I just got to hang out with the Inquisitor! It was fucking awesome! Father. 
Let's go back to the lighthouse, actually. Interesting. So, everything is fucked in the south, even worse than the north. Like, we've only lost Antiva, really. We've lost to Treviso, and we're starting to lose Arlathon Forest. The Inquisitors lose... The Inqu They've lost Denerim, and they would have lost the entire south if not for Orzammar, according to the Inquisitor. We've lost... Uh, Valroyo and Helm Shrall are barely holding out. The armies of Ferelden are holding out at Denerim, or at Redcliffe. Holy fuck, that's bad. Oh, and Kirkwall has been completely taken. Like, yeah, because that's Ferelden down there. That's Orlais. That's Free Marches. That's Kirkwall right there. So Kirkwall's been taken? And they had to flee to Starkhaven? Holy fuck. It seems like so. It seems like Sebastian and Aveline have patched things up a little bit. Well, I guess Sebastian was more pissed at Anders and Hawk than he was Aveline. That's just from the front. Oh, okay, missives. Oh, I have way more. Stand together. Rook, I must thank you again for helping me. Kill on the Shadow Dragon Healer system. Well mended. Oh, we did that off screen too. We did some Dark Spawn stuff. Word of Vesta. Follow up on the Snake Nest. Ne Remember Lance supposed to the Snake Nest Don't. Yeah, this is a quest I did off screen, though not intentionally off screen. I was recording, but it just didn't go through. After found Linus asked why this Linus had been raising Reggie alone. I didn't want the kid left to fend for himself. Before the end, Linus sent Reggie to stay with a friend. The friend wasn't expecting the arrangement to be long term, but they're willing to give the kid a home. That's good. The news wasn't easy to break, but he has people... And I'm going to stop that immediately. Hmm, I don't care about that. The friend wasn't making the friends long term, but they're willing to give us a kid at home. The news hasn't been easy to break, but the people... Are, yeah. Thanks from Treviso. Rook. Thea said that she could get this to you. I just want to let you know, oh, thanks to your rescue, I was able to get the supplies of Rodane down to your Good. An update on Gus. Dear Rook. Oh, Gus is the nug we saved. We saved a nug. Thank you again for out what happened with Tanor and Oros. Gus is adjusting to life without them. I think eating well. It's me and the other Vale Jumpers play with them when we can. He still screams if I try to remove Oros' old backpack from his clutch. Mm, you heard a nug scream. It's bone chilling. Mm -hmm. Those damned relics. <laughs> The Vault Overseer makes sure someone always has an eye on the relics you help us bring back. He gives the turtle look whenever I try to get close. He even hissed at me one time. <laughs> it's supposed to get to the risk. Someone definitely did something to make them more dangerous. We're not sure who they are and why they didn't. Maybe the Vault Tripper, someone dedicated to chaos. Okay. So this is all writing from Nevada City. The Watchers are sending this letter for me. I'm the man who used to be enslaved by the Venatori. Oh, this is the guy we saved in um, Emmerich's recruitment mission. His name was Claudius. Thank you. Bless you for stopping. I would never have seen the sun again but for you. I can sew very well. The watchers say it is a great call for tailors of the deceased. This was strange to me, for we do not need such things in Tevinter. But the watchers have fed me and found me work. I can never repay them or you, but I will help clothe Navarre's dead. May you walk in the light, Cloudus. Awesome. Congratulations to the Hall of Valor. Nice to you proving worth in the fighting pit. The lords are impressed with the Valor spirits, and the Valor spirits are happy. Everything's better when the Valor spirits are happy. And thanks for taking care of Tosh. It wasn't my idea to move her, but I'm glad she's away from those in Tom. Her mother was really afraid of them becoming interested in her because of the fire. But even without that, it's good to get Tosh out into the world. She gets to see more of it, and you get the services of the best damn dragon hunter I've ever known. That's high praise coming from her. Keep up the good fight. See you when we see you, Isabella. Okay, and this is after the dragon. Okay, message from the front. Message from the cruiser. Rook. Though certain sets of public our meeting were perhaps not what either of us would have chosen, I'm glad we did meet. I heard of you from Varric, of course, and Harding spoke and continues to speak very highly of you. Aw, thanks, Harding. However, the greatest vote of confidence came from Morrigan. Interesting. She's always had a knack for spotting those who might shift the foundations of the world, even if they don't know it yet. So it was she who suggested we meet, and as always, heeding her counsel proved to be the wisest decision. I am glad that Morrigan and the Inquisitor are, are like, tight. Like, they're... Very, like, close-knit. I like that. 
Unfortunately, I send grim tidings. No! The echoes of Solus' ritual and the escape of the go gods ring across the south, and the smell of war is heavy in the air. And while the plain affection of the nobility has made common cause with the Venatori and launched an assault upon the rural ports of the lay and the border keeps it for open. Fuck! On Tom Crosshair's her... On Tom Corsair's harassed shipping out of... Harassed shipping out of Ostwick. Fucking course they do. And in the far southern wilds, blight has emerged once more. The Kakari wilds are where the blight's starting again. Dark spot and great numbers have been spotted near the ruins of Ostagar. A fucking course they have! But I told you to leave the south to me, and I stand by that. I share this news not to ask for help, but to remind you that you and your people are not alone. The gods stir up the greatest evils in Thetis, yet his people stand stalwart and resolute. Take care of the gods in the north, and I'll make sure that the south handles itself. And when this is all over, we'll drink to victory. First round's on me. Yours, Inquisitor Valdra Sadar. I loved that. Holy shit. I love these missives. And I, I'm i very pleased. I hope that's not the only time we get to see the Inquisitor in the game. But I did enjoy getting to see him. And when I was making him with the character creator, I'm like, this doesn't really look like Valdros. But after looking at him there, I could tell it was our boy. I, it was very clear that that was our boy, Valdros. I liked that. Anyone want to talk to me here? Oh, oh, everyone wants to talk to me except for Harding and Nev. Of course, except for Harding and Nev. Hmm. Okay, let's go talk to everybody. But first, we're gonna do the Solus thing. View regret. Oh! It's gonna lock a mural! Ooh! What is this mural? You cannot do this, Alganan! You swore that we would give up our commands when this horrific war was over. Mm. Our people need our leadership. If you're unwilling, leave. Is that Mithal? Our people must rebuild, and we must help unite. Mithal, them. we get to hear so our actual we did voice. Not fight for freedom, but to conquer this land and our own. We fought to win, and now the Evanuris are as gods. I do not answer to Mithal's annoying lapdog. The people are afraid. They must believe in something. That's not Flemish voice. They right need We're going with all. Okay. We can hear with all's voice. Wisdom. They need gods who can protect them. We are not gods. You will learn that. Every lapdog hides a wolf inside. Interesting. So Mithal actively teamed up with Elgarnon at first. I guess Solus did too, but it didn't go the way he'd hoped. That was strange. They were speaking Alvin, but I understood. Oh, the whole party's it. gonna enter. I it. believe we have experienced a memory in each of our native languages. Not just any memory. One of the dread wolves. And the mages who declared themselves my gods. Well, mine and Dabrin's. Yeah, what does this get us? Anyone see anything in that memory we can use? Elgrinon was hungry for power. Did anything he could to get it and to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Then Solus, furious, I at love Elgin, this story himself as a despot, started his rebellion. There's another moving part in this. Mithal. She was keeping the peace. Mithal and Solus were close. The Inquisition found a temple to Mithal, and there were wolf statues everywhere. Then she sides with Elgernon over him. A betrayal. Yeah, no wonder he was pissed. It sounded like Solus was loyal to Mithal. What did Elkanon call him? Mithal's lapdog? And then she grabs power alongside Elkanon instead of standing for her principles. I'd be angry too. Totally angry himself. enough to start a rebellion. Yeah. That's not how he'd see it. He didn't destroy the world. Elkanon did. Solus did what he considered necessary to stop him. Solus would try to justify what he did. But he'd also blame himself for what happened. True. Perhaps these murals aren't simply memories. They're what Solus wishes to forget. His regret. That means they're a way to learn his weak points. Why are we worried about Solus? He's trapped. Right. But the Dread Wolf was the god of trickery. He's looking for a way out. Bet on it. Meanwhile, keep your eyes open in the crossroads. 
There's a way to restore the rest of these murals Solus would have kept in this hideaway. It'd be nice to get inside his head for a change. This was fun. This was a good scene. I like that. A memory of false gods. What's down here? <gasps> Another one! Oh, because I found some in the crossroads. What's this one? I was not certain you would come. You were the one who walked away. I never turn my back when my friend needs me. You sure? The Avenue has seeped the magic of the Blight. Impossible. Ogonan, Gilanane, and The Blight that is safely left? sealed away forever. No, I wish I could believe Does you. Know? I have sensed the breaking of the wards. I will investigate your claims. If they forget the danger of the Blight, I will endeavor to remind them. Good. Didn't work, but good. What if, instead, you left the Evanuris and remained with me? Do you not wish for freedom from this struggle? Be at peace, love. I love. will stop them. They were a that's couple. Best. The Blight is our mistake. And that's definitely Flemeth's crown on her head. I guess it's Mathal's crown before it was Flemeth's. Oh, oh this is a big one. Hmm. Did Mathal call Solas love in that memory? That's what it sounded like. So they were doing it. <laughs> the elven gods were free with their emotions. They felt things deeply. So they were doing it. The way it. they expressed things. Fucking love you, well, Tosh. <laughs> it feels romantic to us, but that wasn't really how it was. Back then, I mean. Mm. Nah. They were doing it. I don't think so, and ick. Yeah. Oh, they were absolutely doing it. <laughs> Being with someone you're rebelling against? Doesn't sound like Solus. <laughs> He also met her in secret and talked about how they could run off together. It sounded so tragic and romantic. Oh, wait. Never mind. That does sound like him. So the dread wolf goes to Mathal. That would hit a lot harder if I was, if I we had a Lavellan. And he warns her about the other god using the blight. That's more important than his rebellion. It's like kingdoms coming together when an archdemon rises. Mathal didn't think it was possible. She said the blight was sealed away. Yeah, that's interesting. There's an old legend about it. Davern, the one with Andruel's armor? Not sure it matters. Yeah, let's hear it. We're deep in elven lore already. What's the legend say? Right. Well, Andruel was the goddess of the hunt. She put on armor, magic armor, made of something called the Void. Drove her mad. Yep, the Void. I remember this one. The other gods were afraid Andruel would turn on them. She was doing all kinds of horrible things. Causing plagues. It does sound like the blood. Yeah, 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 it does. Well, it all ends with Mithal fighting Andrul. After, Mithal turned into a dragon. She what? Why didn't you start with that? Fucking love you, anyway, Tosh. She took Andrul. I love away, these two. I love Valar and Tash so much. And peace returned. Intriguing. So it's possible Andrul stumbled onto the magic of the blight. That's the implication, and yeah. When Andrul went mad, Mithal took it from her and locked it away. Until someone started using it again. Gilanon. The Blight's one of the only things that really scares Solus. He came to me. Yeah, for like even in Inquisition, we see that um, Solus is terrified so of the Blight. Mithal goes off to investigate what Solus says. Then what? It's too clean. Seems plenty messy with them doing it. But this isn't just a memory. <laughs> it's something Solus wanted to hide. Tosh is so hung up What's on that. What's the crime? What did we see here that he feels guilty about? I think I might know. When the Inquisitor was saving the world from the breach, he met Mithal. What? Like in a dream? It was complicated. She helped the Inquisition. There was a magic pond and a dragon. Nice. The point <laughs> is, she also said the other elements. These party members are so her, great. Killed her. These party members are so great. I am loving these back and forth interactions. I'm so glad we're doing this this session. What do we mean by killed? Okay, sorry. Point of order. If they killed Mithal, how was she still around to help the Inquisition? Elven god magic? She'd spent centuries gathering strength and sharing people's bodies, I think. Like Flemeth. And maybe even on Possession. That speaks to her character. 
Like, there is a theory that Andraste was not the Bride of the Maker, that she was one of the people who carried Mithal through the ages. Solus goes to Mithal, the one semi-reasonable elven god for help, and the other gods kill her for it. I imagine the Dread Wolf's rebellion heated up significantly after that. Mm -hmm. Right. And Mithal wasn't there to keep the other gods in check anymore. Well, it's not just that she died. What do you mean, Tosh? It's... Ugh. There was stuff he wanted to tell her. But he waited too long. And then she was dead. He never got to make it right. That twists you up. True. That's it. There's our crime. Doesn't really tell us anything we can use, though. No. We really. know more than we did. That's something. True. Then I guess we keep our eyes open if we come across more of these memories. I found a few of those, I think, so we got more to go into. I'm... I'm doing the rest of these. A memory of our mistake. Oh! Yeah, there's more. We're, we're, we're doing as many of them as we can right now. You regret. What's this one? That's Elgarnot in the center. Nope, that's... Souls. What's this one? I'm doing as many of these as I can before we head off to the. You dare to try to cage us, jealous of our growing power. Gilliland. You will pay the final price for this betrayal. We warned you not to use the blight. For this and for Mathol, I sentence you to sleep in exile ever after. Mm -hmm. This is when he makes the veil. This will form the veil that keeps the horror you unleashed at bay. This is him creating the veil. No! Interesting. So he locked the gods away and created Lucanus a veil. Lucanus is drinking this so much coffee this episode, he's going to be awake for days. I mean, they were <laughs> terrible, no question. But what he did, is cool. it didn't just stop them. It destroyed our culture, our world. True. It wasn't just to stop them. It was to stop the blight. We've seen how bad Elganon and Gilanane are. Imagine all seven corrupted gods running wild. So he created the veil just to keep the elven gods locked in their prison? Yes, to keep them from accessing the Fade. But was the creation of the veil around the world an accident? You heard him yelling. That's not the sound of a ritual going right. What do you think, Rook? Okay, so me, Cole, I'm going to think right now. So, Solus not only sealed away the Evanuris, he sealed away the Blight, right? That was his plan. And then, several centuries later, the Tevinter... Some Tevinter Magisters made their way into... They, they breached the Fate physically, made their way into the Black City, and they were cast out. I don't actually think they met any of the Evanuris there, because Corypheus specifically says the throne of the gods was empty, there was nothing there, it was all black. So I think Corypheus and his cohorts accidentally just kind of poked a hole in the Fade, in, in the Veil, like Solus's prison, for the Blight, and the Blight came trickling out, and that's how we get the Blights we've... And that's why the Blights we've had have been so tame. Tame? They've been fucking world-ending, but not compared to what we're seeing in the Veil Guard. So this is the Blight at its... Not even full power, but instead of just like a little, little drip, drip... Like, if, think of it like a faucet... The blight, the first five blights were like drip, drip, like barely on, and Elgarnon and Gilanain being free and doing the blight is just a little, just a little, like tiny stream. The floodgates aren't open yet. That's what's terrifying. Davern and I have fought the blight for years. It's terrifying, watching the gods poison his world, his people. I understand why Solus would do anything to stop it. I know, Rook. I'm not denying that. I just... I wish there'd been a better way. I do too, Valar. All. I really do. So does he. This isn't a memory he's proud of. Oh, definitely not. I had another question, and... I'm sorry, maybe this doesn't matter, but... Solus trapped the Blighted Gods in an ancient elven building, right? That's what it looks like. Maybe a palace? Fancier than what I've seen in Arlathan, at least. And then the magisters were lured into That's the fate. That's what we're talk they just talked about. Them, which let the blight escape and turned the golden city black. Right, and the black city hangs in the fade, a little reminder of their mistakes. What's wrong, Lace? It's just 
The Chant of Light says that the Maker built for them the Golden City, the center of all creation. But if the Golden City was an ancient elven palace, then the Maker didn't build it. The elves did. Exactly. The Chant of Light is Andraste's visions from the Maker. But it sounds like it's wrong. It is You're asking wrong. if we just disproved the entire Andrastian faith. Did we? Confirm, continue, believe. Don't let this shake you. Speak as someone who does not believe in the Maker. This I. Do not give a personal view. I'm sorry this hurts. Speak as someone who does not believe in the Maker. I don't think Rook really believes in the Maker. I'm sorry this hurt. Mm, this is a tough one. Because I wouldn't believe in the Maker if I was in this world, especially all the shit I'm seeing. Don't let this shake you. I think he's going to try to reaffirm her faith. Nah, he's going to be honest. We're not going to lie and be like, don't let this shake you. Get so much no. I don't think after everything Rook has seen, even if he was Andrastian at one point, he's definitely not anymore. The Maker was never my faith, Lace. I'm sorry this is hard for you. The Chant of Light has seen many iterations over the centuries. This may simply change our understanding. That's also true. But this was the one I grew up with. My ma still sings the chant. You know, Good little for Elden Country the girl. The Danish clans are struggling with the same thing. What do we keep? What do we lose? Every religion is struggling. The Elden Gods, the cute. Maker. <laughs> no matter well, who you light a candle people. to, you've got some hard questions to ask yourself right now. Doctrine is not the truth. It is one of many paths to the truth. I recognize the sentiment, though not the specific quote. Who said that? My mother. Ah. Questions of faith aside, we have some very real gods that still need killing. That's very true, Lucanus. Looks like there are three more of these murals with the Dreadwolf's old memories. Wonder what else he's hiding. Three more? Okay. Do I have them all of me? I don't think I do. Is that all I got? Nope, I have one more. So that's a big thing I hadn't thought about with Rook. I think he grew up believing in the Maker and still believed in the Maker up until everything started happening now. Seeing Elgarnon and Gilanane and seeing all this stuff, I don't think... He might believe in the Maker a little. I don't like the line of dialogue where he said the Maker was never my faith. It was at one point in his life, but it's not now. He's definitely not an atheist, per se. And he doesn't worship, but he doesn't worship any gods, if that makes sense. Okay. I wonder if we do have all of them. What's this one? This one's involves Mithal. You have so long observed the world. Why not consider joining it? But I have no desire to live as humans. I have the fade. Besides, this talk of taking on a solid form. I think you underestimate the danger. Was Solus a spirit? Build your body. Did the earth not shake? Delirium gives us the strength we had when we were of the Fade. We are the best of physical and spirit. Solus was a spirit. I need your wisdom. Was he a spirit? Solus. He was a. To withstand. He was a spirit of wisdom. I would go too far like Elganon. I need you. He was this a spirit of wisdom. Is madness. You must know that. I will always follow where you go. He was a spirit of wisdom, and his name Solus means pride in Elven. So Solus what? is kind of a pride demon. This is astounding. The ancient elves were spirits who voluntarily manifested a physical form. I'd rather go back to talking about the blight. <laughs> hey, Lucanus, could spite turn into an elf? No. Sorry, but... What? This is interesting. It is interesting! This puts all of elven history in a new light, not to mention what we think about spirits. I mean, some magic works differently for elves. If we came from spirits, that'd explain it. The knowledge that an entire people were formed from a mass manifestation could change our entire understanding of magic. Could. If we let it out, is that the right call? 
Do you want bigoted humans yelling about how elves are demons? The fair the point. Well, it's not fair. short on small minded humans. Hmm. Yeah. If the world learned about this and it led to attacks against elves. Elves have enough trouble as it is down in Ferelden. Fuck yeah, they do. You have to tell someone, though. Strife in Irland, at least. If I told Thea and Viago, they'd think I was sampling Viago's poison collection. No one would believe us. Okay. We keep this to people we trust who have good reason to know. No shouting it from the rooftops. Like the other villagers. The Morn Watch has a great deal of experience keeping dangerous secrets. So, beyond the world shaking stuff, what else did we learn here? Solus himself was a spirit. He damn sure well, kind damn of right. was. That's a theory my friend well, Sarah's had for a while. Elven for pride. Oh, okay. There's something else. Not about spirits, or not all about them at least. This is so Solus good. Solus didn't want to become a person with a physical body. Right. He only agreed after Mathal begged him. Then that's his regret. He wishes he'd never taken physical form. Maybe, but not just that. Solus was scared. They built their bodies out Titans. of the Titans! And it made the ground shake. Titans! They hurt the Titans. They started the war, yeah. You think the ground shaking was the Titans? It makes sense, doesn't it? Something was hurting them, taking their blood. So they struck back, like we'd swat a stinging bug. The first memory we saw with Elganon seizing power it happened at the end of a war. A war against the Titans. A war between the Titans and the Elves. And we just saw how it started. Mm -hmm. It feels like we still don't have the full picture. We're getting there. But I think that's part of what Solus regrets. He didn't see the danger. No, he did not. Except he did. He was worried. You said it yourself. He did it for Mithal. Everything that followed, he could have prevented. If he just told her no. Then he's got a war on his conscience. Plus, whatever we find next. Hmm, interesting. Memory of a man of... Is that the last one I have? Do I have any more? I... Okay, what am I... Mi I'm missing... One... I'm missing two. Oh boy, I can't wait to find more of those. That looks like something involving Titans. That I can't tell. That was really fucking cool. Damn, I'm gonna have a hard time picking a title for this episode. <laughs> okay, who do we need to talk to? Emmerich, Balara, Tosh, and Davern. Oh, let's go talk to Balara and Tosh for let's save Emmerich for last. Got more side quests coming along. To Polara first. She's got a quest for me? I cannot say. Who created you? I cannot say. What can you say? I cannot say. Oh. Right. Deserve that. Oh no. Got the archive spirit working, I see. Rook, you're here. And I did. Sort of. A little bit. It appears, but it won't tell me anything. You simply ask the wrong questions. A common affliction of the weak-minded. Oh. Also that, it's kind of mean. Insult it back. Just insult it right back. Assuming you know how to insult a spirit. I've never thought about it. H how would you do that? Emmerich might know. <laughs> that is an idea. Syrian learned a lot. Taught me a lot about these archives. They have, well... Not thoughts like us, but sort of pathways, I guess. Mm -hmm. They can only respond to specific questions worded in specific ways. So, if you're powerful, like almost God-level powerful, how would you talk to someone you see as lesser? Condescendingly, it seems. Really condescendingly, based on experience so far. Right! You wouldn't ask questions, you'd tell them what to do, so let's try that. Archive, tell me who built you. One of the greatest of Elvenan, a steward of her glory. Truly, 
I was blessed to bathe in his warmth. Good. Anaris built me, and to him I shall someday return. Anaris? You mean the Forgotten One? I cannot say. Good point. It came later. Forgotten One? I know about the Forgotten Ones. What but or who is a Forgotten One? The bad gods, or so we were taught, told never to speak their names. Elgrinon, Gilanane, they were the good ones that you could pray to. Hmm. But now we know the truth about the Ebenurus. So we don't know for sure what the Forgotten Ones were. I Maybe mean, they were the good gods. They used to say souls. Maybe was they were the Tevitra old so gods. Best case scenario, like him. Worst case, well, you heard it talk. Right. So this thing's dangerous if it belonged to one of them. Could be, but still important and invaluable. Very. Everything Anaris knew, this, this is such a lore heavy episode and, and I love it. deserve to know. If I can get it to tell me. People, this this game is so good for Dragon Age lore and the people are saying it doesn't feel like Dragon Age. This feels so much about Dragon Age. Archive, tell me about the Dreadwolf. An ideologue and a fool who will soon pay the price. When Anaris dispatches the Evanuris, he will spare a thought for Fen Harel. Hmm. Archive, tell me about the Evanuris. A group of cowards hiding behind their more powerful magic and superior numbers. Hmm. Their jealousy of Anaris was palpable. Their war is unending, but Anaris will prevail. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Have fun with the condescending spirit. I'll try. Could be worse, I guess. Worse? Like the wound of betrayal Lord Anaris suffered. Soon he will cast down the oppressors and take his rightful place. What a shame I can't stay longer. Good luck. Appreciate the support. <laughs> I kind of liked that. Well, that was a I that was a quest marker though. Is there still one there? No. Okay, we've got one for who still? Tosh in the kitchen. And then Emmerich. And eh, well, eh, Davrin. I'm a little worried because Davrin and I've been flirting a lot, and I'm like, I don't want it to lock in a romance. Why do you run around in fancy mage clothes? Because I like them. <laughs> You're barely even wearing a shirt. <laughs> you fight Anton with a bare midriff. Everything all right? We're fine. Just trading fashion tips. So what I wear is a problem for you. It's not. It's just... Why dress like that? Are you trying to make your mother happy? Mm. Your mom said something. Let's talk to us, Tash. Tash, what's going on? Something is clearly bothering you. My bets on mothers and dresses. It's just something my mother said the other day. And I act more like a man. Yeah, I, I was there when she and said that. And you feel like you should wear dresses to make her happy. <laughs> no. Can you imagine me in a dress? I'd look stupider than I... I'd look stupid. Could already have gender roles, that's the thing. I wasn't raised under the cube, but our people believe some jobs are for men and others are for women. <laughs> yep. You dress like a warrior. And for Kanari, a warrior is a man's job. Is that why your mother said what she said? No. I mean, maybe. But it's fine. She says stuff like that all the time. She shouldn't, though. And? It feels... right. When she says I act more like a man. It feels... right. Why does it feel right? Mm. Tosh, do you like being a woman? <laughs> Nobody likes being a woman. Nah. Mm -hmm. This is stupid. Forget I said anything. No fucking way. We're here to help. We're here to help you, Tosh. We're here to help you figure out who you are as a person and appreciate your decision no matter what you do and stand by you. Because that's what good people do. Anyone who tells her that she's 
or there wrong is a piece of garbage. If you don't want to talk about it anymore, we won't. But whatever this is, this team is here for you. Yes, we are. I, I still don't know what this is. Some of my friends in Minrathas talk about not feeling comfortable in their own skin. As a man, as a woman. This is a I really important like thing to, to have in a video game. Maybe what they say fits how you're feeling. Yeah. Okay. This and thanks. You do look really pretty. Oh? To look at. I'd smudge your makeup. Thanks for letting me down gently. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, some people have said they don't like how there's like all this trans and non-binary inclusion in the game because it's like, why does it have to be in a fantasy game? And to th those people, I say, fuck off. Because representation matters. Trans, non-binary, uh, gender neutral, gender fluid people deserve representation. You can even be a trans character in the game if you want. It's not forced on you either. Like, I had the option to choose the gender options, but I could have, even if I picked the a gender identity thing with the mirror, I could have said, yep, I'm a dude, because I am. And uh, me, Cole, I'm a bisexual man, but I'm a man, and I feel like a man all the time. I don't have any illusion. I don't have, not illusions, that's, that's the wrong thing to say, I did not mean that. I don't have any confusion about my gender role or any questions. I know that I'm a man, but not everyone's like that. There are people out there like Tosh, and they deserve representation. And Brooks is the same way as me. He's, he's like, yep, yeah, I like everybody. Oh, God, this man's handsome. Oh, don't smirk at me like that. I did appreciate when I posted him on my Instagram and my TikTok and stuff like that, everyone was like, you just made you with horns. And I'm like, you guys think I'm that handsome? Thanks. <laughs> He's a good baby. Can we call him a puppy? Call him a kitten. Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to interrupt. He's singing to the baby. Please do. I need to hear an actual voice now and then. I love a song so much. Imagine why. I'm starting to dream that I'm a griffin. Squawk. Dream big. Keep dreaming. It's good to have goals in life. <laughs> The real dream is getting him to take a nap. So Dude, that's parenthood. <laughs> nice to have a fellow warden on the team. Our paths may not have crossed at Weishaupt, but we have one experience in common. Ah, the joining. Mm. The moment this they had us a chalice oh. with demon blood. And the moment we took a sip. What were we thinking? <laughs> My head was exploding. You tell me. So this is a interesting. This conversation must be unique to if you play a Grey Warden, which I fucking love that they include that in the game. There's probably a conversation with Balara if you're a Veil Jumper, uh, Emmerich if you're more Watch, Ta Tosh if you're uh, Lord of Fortune, etc., etc. And I love that they put so much effort into making your character's backstory feel unique. I've seen some people complaining you don't get to play your full backstory like you could in Origins, but. They do, they, I'm only like, what, 20 hours in the game, and they have done so much more regarding my character's backstory in this game than in just the first, like, I think, like, third, than they did at all in Origins. Did I know it? Are you insane? This is too easy. I thought this was the ale. It's an honor. This is too easy. I was thinking, this is too easy. When does it get hard? I don't believe that for a second. Archdemon blood taking hold of your brain? Yeah. Hey. This warden plays to win. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Though I can't say I've got it all worked out, being a warden. Feeling lost? Thinking about the calling, yeah. This is so Sometimes cool! Sometimes I think about the calling. I love this. You hear stories about other wardens who have left for theirs. Here, warden. Thanks for your service. Now enjoy the creepy sound in your head. But don't worry, that's just an archdemon calling out to Darkspawn. Yeah. And before you succumb to that nasty blood you drank way back, how about you spend your final days in the deep roads? And take a few Darkspawn off while you're at it. Nice knowing you. <laughs> Can't imagine why you'd be feeling lost. So fucking... God. What's it's a dark life being a great warden. illustrious leader. Is the first warden always a pain, or is it me? 
A bit of both. You know he's all about discipline. And I'm not. Well... Okay, so maybe I like to keep things loose. <laughs> and the First Warden wants everything lashed down tight. Yeah. I can see why you might feel a little lost. Get to play with Griffins. Well, I find out we've secretly raised Griffins this whole time, and you get to play with them. How did I miss that meeting? Nothing personal. I only got called in when the Gloom Howler showed up. Yeah, the First Warden lost me. More like our esteemed First Warden is an impossible ass. Let him be. You and I will sort this ourselves. Hell yeah. Not exactly the army Brothers. legend. Legend in the making. You go to war with the army you There was only two Wardens in the, the last House flight. will come through. And we gotta steal on. Along with a very noisy griffin who will squawk the enemy to death. <laughs> no armor can withstand that. Don't encourage him. Won't happen again. See you two around. I really liked that. That was great. That was so well done. That was a more important conversation about being a Grey Warden than Alistair and the and Einar Kuzland ever had. That was fucking awesome, and I loved it. That is a big ass snake on the ceiling. But uh, to be fair, Davrin, like. Uh, Devrin's right, you go to war with the army you have, and Rook is like, oh yeah, we're not two wardens, we're not exactly the army of legend, and it's like, bro, the last blight, this is the sixth blight technically right now, we're in the sixth blight, if we want to get technical. The fifth blight was ended by two Grey Wardens, three if you count Reorden, and he didn't do a whole lot. He, I mean, to be fair, he grounded the Archdemon, so that helped a lot, but there were only two wardens. You know what? Once again, the world will be saved by a, a handsome-ass Grey Warden with long, flowing golden locks and his very buff and hot Grey Warden sidekick with a sword and a shield. Except, instead of a Mabari, we have a Griffin. Do I prefer... Oh, there's his bed. That makes sense. Do I prefer having... Honestly, that would be so nice. Imagine accidents. I would sit right there and I'd fall off. I would love to sit like right there. It's a nice chair. God, I love this game so fucking much. And I know I've said that a lot, but I I think you guys will notice I say it during combat. Like I'm, during combat, I'm like, yeah, this game's pretty cool. But the times where I say this game is so good, this game is amazing, are when we're doing the story bits, and particularly when it's the character interactions. Because the character actions, interactions of this game are phenomenal. I don't care what anyone says. The character interactions are so fucking good. Let me talk to Embrick again. Hey, buddy. Rook. Interested in visiting the Memorial Gardens? What are you up to? I must tend to some rites in the Necropolis. We I'd can like do that. to show you it's more peaceful side. Yeah, let's do that. I think that's how we'll end the episode. Yeah, we'll do that actually before we do the uh before we head to the Grey Warden area. We will any new quests available? No. So I have quests there. Uh Necropolis. Let's go Emmerich. And in case we get into any combat, let's bring... You know who we haven't brought in a while? We haven't brought Nev. To, like, anywhere actual. Like, interesting. And I got some new clothes for everybody. Off-screen, too. Whenever I... The accidental off-screen. I forgot to have this awesome-looking armor and axe. And then we're gonna need to do Grey Warden shit, and I'm probably gonna get Grey Warden armor that's even better. And I'm gonna be like, oh, gimme. Visit the Necropolis Gardens. I was wondering why we didn't get the uh, cutscene, like, because the, usually the first qu character companion quest you get is like the, hey, let's just go hang out, the two of us. And we didn't get that with Emmerich at first. We got, like, actual quests with combat. But here's our, like, get to know you quest. Oh, I'm glad I brought. Vulnerable. Ooh, that was... 
Two mages and a warrior. Oh god, the well, combat is so satisfying. See, how is this not the perfect Dragon Age game? The story so far has been phenomenal. It keeps the lore intact, but more interesting. And the combat is the best Dragon Age has ever been by a wide margin. So, like, this is without a doubt, hands down, the best Dragon Age game on paper. We'll have to see if the story sticks to land. The only way I... The only way I could see it failing me is if the game fumbles the story. Because the combat, you can't fumble it. The characters, unless they make some really dumb decisions with them, can't fumble them for me so far. It's just going to depend on the actual main plot. And so far, it's been good. So as of right now, I'm calling it. By the end of this Let's Play, I will think that Dragon Age of the Belgard is the best Dragon Age game. As of right now... It's my favorite to play by far, and the story, for as far into it as we've gotten, like the first 20 hours or so, it's definitely the best in like the beginning. Ah, Origins was also really good all the way through, so. But this game, obviously, gameplay, graphics, art style, everything, completely outclasses Origins. And so far, the characters are better than Origins in my mind. Do I think the characters are better than Dragon Age 2's overall yet? Not quite, but it's getting there. We'll have to see how it finishes. And that's what I'm saying. Right now, this game is a 9 out of 10 for me. And the only way it could drop is if they fumble the story. But I don't think they're going to. And from what I've heard from some of the people I'm mutuals with on TikTok and stuff like Kala Elizabeth, there's no way it's going to be fumbling. She said the story gets even better after Act... We're still at Act 1, from what I've heard. And apparently Act 2 and 3 are 10 times better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe that. And in my mind... This is going to be the best Dragon Age game, but we'll have to see. I'm still, I'm not going to confirm that yet. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, lots of dead people to kill. Wait, did my shield bounce off my attacks? Oh! The display to the grand copper seems to be something to you all. Can't see it every day. This guy is dead. Ever. There be no Oh, that's a nice combo I didn't think about before. Well struck, Rook. Ha 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 Get him. Bam! Under fire. Watch it. Oh, there's someone behind us too. Big hammer. enemy to deal with. Yeah. 
bring your swords down. That's the last of them. Cool. Still standing, not bad. Good fight, guys. I like having two mages in the party, it's fun. Oh, start quest. And now we're just gonna go hang out with him. Thank you again for coming. My duties include tending to these rites of remembrance. Of course. Excellent. Manfred found his way down. A very good, Manfred. Manfred! He sounds excited. I love Manfred. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> Mercer. God, that armor looks good. start the rites here. A tableau of the dead, commissioned 173 years ago. These lives were flickers against the ages, precious, fragile, and finite. Now they serve as a warning. Don't linger over long in the gloom. Live with grace and fervor while you may. Mm -hmm. Solid lesson. No one's going to seize the day for you. Just so. That I like Emmerich so far. He's very yes. nice. Who were you when you breathed above? This is so cool. This body was a tailor's, a mother's. She laughed and taught and wove the robes kings wore when they were crowned. That's pretty cool. Someone must realign her thoracic vertebrae. I hope the novices are inspecting the displays. Did it only be right? Yeah, like uh, respect the ends. Disrespectful to abandon something you built. Exactly. Precisely. No wonder there's been an uptick in hauntings. Wait, what? Let's continue. <laughs> no, you, 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 you gotta say more than that. So what now? We light candles in remembrance of the dead. Would you care to light the candle, Rook? Look at this. The last tomb of the Tannhausens. A very influential family in the Storm Age. Hmm. We broke the bones of dragons. A posthumous motto. Their last heir met his match against a Highland Ravager. Death by dragon. I'm surprised that was enough to bury. Honestly, yeah. Dragons usually don't leave a lot left Do you over. Know, I never expected that the door we found back in the Vault of the Beloved would lead here. So, the necropolis actually shuffles its rooms around? From time to time. Very unlikely to happen while we're inside a chamber. Could you light the next candle? That's so interesting that the necropolis just kind of goes shift, move, shift, move, like however it wants. That's so uh, cool. Ah, Such a cool idea. One of my favorite flowers. A variegated weeping widower. You know your plants? Uh, Alchemy is my talk hobby. To, you and Harvey need to hang from out. Teaching spirit calling and theoretical applied metaphysics. He's right. fucking smart. Just on the side. He, this man is crazy way, intelligent. Rook. I now see the appeal. You're right about the gardens being peaceful. I think I'd rather roam my sim than the Thomas. dangers. For my but these places are a refuge hmm. for the dead. How many people are buried here anyway? Excellent question. We rarely should take a new census. You'll need to light these candles as well. I'm trying. Open your hearts to the final day, companion of all the ages. I was pleasantly surprised by your respect for our undead tableau earlier, Rook. Surprised? I'm to Why? People outside Navarra find the necropolis a little unnerving. A little. The Grey Wardens have some unusual traditions too. And Rook's tall. And Rick is tall for a human. Holy shit. Give me a few more candles. I didn't even Follow think me. about that. Emmerich's very tall for a human. Like, the rest of the party has been, like, maybe shoulder height to Rook. Except for Tosh, obviously. And uh, look here. And Emmerich is chin height? Maybe even taller? Emmerich's fucking tall, dude. I'm pretty sure I made Rook as tall as you could be. Hi. Hi. Should I say hi? It's curious about you. 
We're also enjoying the garden's fucking talk. Ritual ahead. On your way, my friend. Spirit. This is really so fun. Specialty. I've always had this a This is some Harry Potter book. shit, but Even as not a child, written by a bigot. They were my companions. <laughs> After you started training here. After I was orphaned. Oh. Oh. A collapsed building. Oh, Swift we deaths. and we just talked After about funeral, Rooks and Rooks took me in. And we just talked about last episode how I kind of constructed Rook's backstory and his Kunari parents are dead. He's raised by he was raised by humans, but he's an orphan too technically. Belated condolences, if that's worth anything. Always. We move on, as we must, but those long nights linger about the shadows. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with it? I didn't. When I first arrived here, I was terrified. And you still joined the Watchers? They're what saved me. Are we gonna run into Cassandra's uncle Come. in here, or he maybe next set of graves? Maybe he's ahead. dead. It's been ten years. Her, she said her uncle was a mortalitarsi. So Cassandra's uncle works here. Please light the next candles, if you would. Okie dokie. There's much to recommend about the rhythm of a ceremony. It eases our worst hours. As a boy, the Watcher's rituals were exactly what I needed to steady my days with purpose. I'm... And some death magic? Well, every young mage needs a speciality. So I'm gonna say this now, I am loving these little missions where it's just like you go and you just kind of like either run an errand or just hang out with your party member and get to know them. These are so nice. It's a nice break from the action and you get to learn more about your party members. And every single one of these party members so far is so well written and so unique to this game. I'm fucking loving this. The least unique one is Hardin because she's just a simple Ferelden girl, but she's still great. All this I love Emmerich. This he is not what I expected at all. Gloom and it's right. I ask you, Rook, what is it for? It's got to be the living, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. This place is an abundance of history, of magic, of memories. Mm -hmm. The Watchers preserve it so the living may draw comfort from those who've gone before. Okay, where are we going, bud? We must get to the candle, please, Manfred. You told Harding that Manfred used to be a wisp until you gave him a body. Yes, he's taken so well to it, haven't you, Manfred? <laughs> I love Here Manfred are the last so much. candles you'll need to light. Fucking, I love Manfred so much. Once you're ready, we'll need to ring the bell. I guess you have to do it. I could have just poked it. Emrick's. I'm still getting over how Emrick's like fucking tall for human. Let the rites be acknowledged. Our bonds seen and sealed. We honor Dude, it's gotta be like the six, listening four. spirits. Oh. Oh! Hail from the abyss. We witness, good watcher, faith kept in all our paths. What was... The necropolis hosts many spirits. We thank these guardians for their protection and friendship. This is so we'll interesting. To ring the bell I'm loving once this. more to close out the departing ceremony. I, I'm so glad we did this. I love all of these little quests with the party members. It's so fucking cool, and it makes you like every party member more, or dislike, I guess, depending on your preference. But so far, it's made me like every single one of them more. Lucanus is probably the most boring party member to me so far of the new ones. He's still interesting and he's still cool, but and I get the appeal. I get the appeal everyone so has for really him. Afraid he's of cool this place as a child. But I like Emmerich a lot more. Itself, and Davrin. What was draped around it? Out of the male characters, I like Davrin and Emmerich. Have you Emmerich ever been frightened much by the thought more. of dying? Oh, that's a good question. 
I like Emric and Davern a lot more than Lucanus right now. But, however, I do have slower growth with Lucanus because I saved him in Rathus. So maybe I'll think differently on a playthrough where I save it, uh, Treviso. This is too heavy for me. Of course. I think Rook... I don't think Rook is scared of dying. He doesn't want to die, but I don't think he's scared of it. It's part of life. I wish I'd had your equanimity when I was younger. How old is Emmerich? In his 50s? 60s, maybe? That's when I discovered I possess a great terror of dying. The Death Mage is afraid of death. Interesting. It goes beyond dread. Can't be reasoned with. Or soothed over. That's a whole other new layer to him. He's afraid of death. It comes without warning. In the dead of night. Sunlit streets. A roar. Strangling fear. This is such a cool conversation. Deep past the heart. This is so well written. That's an issue for a necromancer. <laughs> Oddly, I discovered I wasn't alone. I debated this fear with friends. I argued with teachers. Yet. It lingered. <gasps> Tea! Manfred's right. That's maudlin enough. There are struggles, but a watcher should always find peace amongst the graves. And what sort of host would I be if we didn't end with some light refreshment? No, we're not scared. Hmm. Don't you impress yet. That's very thoughtful. That sounds great. We're not going to romance Emmerich on this playthrough, but we might on another one. Would you mind letting Manfred pour? He does so love seeing the steam rise from the cups. <laughs> I fucking love Manfred so much. <laughs> Man oh, they gave us Manfred and a song. I love this. Oh, that's great. Pick what? Okay, let's go to... Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh, what am I doing here? Okay, we're gonna go back to the lighthouse. Oh god, we're already over an hour. Like, I'm not restricting myself to an hour each episode like I did with Inquisition. Oh! More people want to talk to us. Okay, well with that, we're gonna end the episode right here then. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe if you enjoyed, and if you like seeing more Dragon Age, the Veilguard content. This is our first playthrough, but it will not be the only one on the channel. I plan on streaming a Nightmare Run uh, sometime soon in the future, and that's either going to be a human warrior or an elven mage. I haven't decided yet. I'm playing an elf rogue on my own, so that's why I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, so I will do that soon. I'll let you guys know when that's going to happen, but anyways, thanks so much for watching.